Hello and welcome to The Debrief. I'm Seth Ressler. And I'm Becky Scarcello. And this is the show where we meet the creatives who are sh- uh, shaping Detroit. I'm still getting used to that tagline. It's brand <laughs> we're new. We're brand new at this. We're, uh, we're going video. Uh, it's something that we've you know, we've been doing the audio podcast for a long time. Three years. Yeah, but it's it's uh, quite a transition. It is. Uh, yeah. That's actually something that we're talking about today. I've been doing audio my whole career, right? I'm a radio guy. I've been podcasting for a number of years. Um, but you had to make that transition. I did. You are a person who knows a ton about Detroit. You lead uh, tours of the city. Uh, and then about three years ago, you decided that you were going to join me on this podcast. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> You're still regretting it, right? A little bit. But it's a it's a big transition to go into this, even though you had a ton of knowledge, to go into this new medium. It's just, There's a lot of uh, learning curve to it, right? Definitely. And speaking in a whole different way into a microphone that's going to be recorded is way different than walking the streets of Detroit yeah. saying it out loud to live people. Well, I feel it now, that now that we're going video, because, uh, you know, the old joke is that, you know, you've got a face for radio, and now here we are on I the know. screen. Yeah. Uh, our guest today has made the same type of transition. She is a visual artist. She has been very successful with her visual mm-hmm. art. Uh, she's a single woman who is on all the dating apps like Plenty of Fish and Bumble and all those kinds of things and uh, has gotten awful messages from men over the years. Pretty creepy, pretty nasty. We're pretty terrible. Uh, mm-hmm. And she takes wow. those messages and she turns them into art. Uh, and the art is amazing. Uh, she's really compelling. Gotten a lot of accolades for it, done a TED Talk and everything. Uh, but she decided that she wanted to launch a podcast, which is weird if you're a visual artist because there's no visual component. You can't even see what you're no. talking about. Yeah. So we're going to find out what that journey was like. Joining us today is the woman behind Sari Tales, Sari Rudin. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, guys. I'm so excited to be here. Welcome, welcome. There is uh, one thing that we should mention. We actually helped you with this podcast, right? Uh, <laughs> yes. We've got a company called a Michigan Podcast Productions, and, and so this was a project that uh, we were fortunate to work with you on. Uh, and so we're glad that you're here to talk to us about what you went through in doing all this. Absolutely. So I think first, let's kind of set the scene. If you can uh, tell us a little bit about your concept for your art, and we're going to flash a piece up on the screen so that people can see it. But of course, you know, some people are just listening to okay. this. If you could walk us through this example. Yeah. So um, basically in this example, it's called The Prize, and it's based, all of my art is based on messages men send me on dating apps. So this message literally said, uh, younger women, young women are the prize. So after receiving that message, you know, I screenshot it and it inspired this idea of creating a piece um, that is a collage. So it's based, it's taking sampling and sourcing photographs from different magazines. And I kind of found these two really cool profile pictures, one of an older woman and one of a younger woman um, uh, facing opposite directions and then connecting them are just different types of flowers and you know from like a home and garden magazine so it's kind of connecting the old and the young and so this this idea that youth is a prize um I was trying to show that within each person we have we have youth and we also have age and you really can't have one without the other and to really just dismiss somebody because they're older is such a waste and obviously um just from the uh perspective of women and youth and beauty and, and that, all that propaganda. This is like such a bigger issue, um, you know, between tying someone's value to their youth and beauty. So I was kind of really trying to connect, um, connect the idea that everybody's old and everybody's young, and there's not really one side that should have more value than the other because we need both to feel complete. So that's what the collage is trying to visually show. We have the words overlaid with the collage art. Um, and then I always show the text message with the art. So people really are you know, hit over the head with what I'm trying to communicate. Yeah, what started it all, basically. I, I yeah. love this. This yeah. is uh, a so little compelling. safer for work than some of the other pieces that well, I've seen we, that you do. Well, we should choose. <laughs> I you have, yeah, you know, I, I can't have everything be dick pics and, like, <laughs> vagina things. Like, sometimes, you know, I want to show my parents things. So right, I, right, I, right. I, I buy Home and Garden and Glamour Magazine and see what I can find. Yeah. So as Seth was saying, you know, you had an accomplished uh, career as this visual artist. You've got a platform. You've done a TED Talk. You're selling at shows around the country. Why podcasting? Mm -hmm. What made you want to get into that different realm? 
Um, I think I'm always looking for new ways to challenge myself. And even with the art, like there's so many different mediums within art. Obviously there's design. And then I also am working uh, sometimes in three-dimensional with, with clay. And then there's collage. And so I really felt like audio was the next step um, is just kind of having a more, more holistic approach to being a creative. You know, it's just a, a different medium to explore. And I've never... I've never done a podcast. I mean, I've been guests, but I've never been on the other side of the podcast. And um, it was quite an experience. Yeah. So once you're thinking about being on the other side, you're used to visually bringing something to life. What were those different things that you really need to kind of think about and challenge yourself with? What were those elements that were different? I, I really felt like there was a lot more pressure. I guess when I do my art, you're behind the scenes. There's nobody recording anything. I can start over. I can take as long as I want. Um, it's more relaxed. And there's obviously pressure I put on myself, but there's really no audience. And it's this idea that you're performing, I think, in a sense with audio, even if it's not live, there's this performance aspect to it. And that freaks me out. And it, it like I get stage fright and I hate how my voice sounds. And there's just you actually have to talk like I'm so much better at writing and communicating that way versus um, speaking, even speaking what I wrote. Like, it's just, it's a totally different art form being able to tell a story. Um, and for example, like I remember uh, when you guys were coaching me on some of this stuff, even the way that I spoke my intro, like how to introduce my art, which is like second nature to me by this point, I know how to describe my art. Um, when you're doing it for an audio, for an audience, audio, like you don't want to speak with commas. Like, I guess I use a ton of commas and, <laughs> and, even C's and you know, Seth and you guys are, you know, it's constantly like, stop right there. Like make it complete, concise thoughts. Like people need to be able to digest that. You, you know, you can't read it. You're listening to it. So you really have to make these editable, like small bite size portions of info. So it's just, it was a really, it was an amazing experience. I just, it was much harder than I thought. I this is something that has come up a, a few Sam, times. Yes. In fact, I used to coach high school speech and debate, and I would tell the kids, commas are evil. And the reason why yeah. is you had these kids who had, were, they were so used to writing for eyes, right? Words that were meant to yep. be read. And then now that mm -hmm. you've got to write words that are meant to be heard, it's it's a different style. I mean, Seth still it's, tells me, no, would you say that in real yeah. life? <laughs> you might you, write it, but yeah, you guys said that to me all the like time. That. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. But my answer was, I actually do talk like this, so am I just a jerk? Like, I really now <laughs> think about every, or like, you, you'd you be like, oh, those are too many big words, and I wasn't trying to be <laughs> pretentious. I think I just use them because I'm used to writing more, you know, theatrically or, you know, just a little more colorfully. But when you're talking, that stuff doesn't really translate. And it, it is a different art form of storytelling. I'm used to the visual way and the verbal way is just a, a whole different ballgame that I cl clearly have not mastered. But, you know, I dipped my toes in and it was really scary. <laughs> well, especially because you hadn't ever done anything like that before. So no. what what kind of research or um, background kind of work did you do to kind of, you know, book your guests and get ready to have these conversations? Um, well, I started listening to a lot of podcasts actually right um, when quarantine started with COVID. So I really do think that also kind of parallel path my interest in doing a podcast. Like I was going for walks every day or your home, just killing time. So I was listening to a lot of podcasts and it was just a really... Um, a really convenient way to consume information and get really in like I felt like it, it was like you know that feeling when you read a book and you're in that other world and it was the ability to do that but also be outside and on a walk so I just kind of fell in love with that form of communication so when I was um thinking about doing one I was looking list thinking about all the podcasts that I really enjoyed and what I liked about them the, not only just the topics, but the way that they structured their show, the types of guests they had, the stuff I didn't like, like the small talk in the beginning, I just always skip through, um, which you always think maybe people are interested in, but I, I think unless you're like a famous person, nobody really cares. <laughs> so it's more about the content than the backstory. Even when it's Mark Marin, I skip past that first like 10 minute monologue. Like I just, no, uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> So it's, and now when I listen to podcasts, like I'm always like, it's kind of like, you know, like a little veil has been lifted because you know, there's like certain tricks or they edited or, um, you know, we're, we're, 
did they record pre-record like did they have interview questions lined up or did they do this organically because there's again working with you guys taught me there's like different types of uh structures like you can have like a, a more traditional interview or you can have a more organic conversation and the way that we did once upon a feminist was not interview like i had an outline of questions and points i wanted to get across but we really tried to play off whatever the guest said and um have like a more organic natural conversation that still you know tried to weave throughout those big big questions but um which is hard you know i think that's much harder it's so much it would be a pleasure to just read a question get an answer and not have to actually listen because you just read the next question. <laughs> sure, but sure. It was like I had to practice active listening to their answer while figuring out how to make that work with the next part of the podcast. So it was like it was exhausting. Like after our hour recording sessions, I would take a nap. Like they were draining, like <laughs> yeah. exhilarating, but just like really exhausting. Well, you even ended up with an episode about that, that touches on the active listening, like when you're going on a date yes. or, or meeting with anyone exactly. and uh, it, it's yeah, a real Celeste. skill. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, how do you, how do you think um, this has expanded your artwork? Like how, what's the um, connection? Well, I really think it's a way for me to just continue the conversation with the art and it, cause there's so much to be said and there's, only so much you can say with a visual piece, which is a limitation of visual art. Like, I think that's, it's an amazing, like, I love the fact that I am a visual artist and a graphic designer, but sometimes I have so much to say and people who are kind of coming to my Instagram account or to buy art, just want to look at the art and they don't always, aren't always interested in the, the, the story and that's okay. Um, but I think there's so much, there's so much more to the art than just the visual. And I really was looking for a platform to be able to to talk about it. And that's why the podcast is just like a supplement to the art. It's not in place of, it just, mm -hmm. I think, right. uh, supplements it. See, I would think a dick pic would, you know, speak a thousand words. Speaks for itself, oh. usually. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that you still need more after that. Right. <laughs> There's yeah. so much explaining that needs to happen. No, yeah. and it's just, yeah. and it's great. You know, and again, Instagram is so, uh, I have mixed feelings about Instagram, but it is sure. limiting in um, how many characters you can have. And, uh, how many slides you can show and your stories are 24 hours. And it's just, sometimes you, it, it I felt um, limited and like caged in. And I feel like with the podcast, it really just gave me some freedom to just explore these ideas um, more fully. Great. So now that you're on the other side of it, you've gone through this, obviously learned a lot. What type of yes. advice would you have for any kind of artist that's like going to branch out into a medium that isn't their natural medium? Um, I would say be prepared to feel lost and it's okay. Like I felt really insecure a lot of times and I, I, I feel like I had probably had some temper tantrums at some points. Like I just, I'm used to knowing what I'm doing. I know the programs. I know my, I know my stuff and to feel like insecure about your art is, um, it's humbling, you know? So, but I, I really truly learned a lot and it was like a totally great experience and I'm learning to not hate my voice when I hear it back, <laughs> um, which is huge because I've always, you know, everyone says that my voice. At first. Yeah. 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 No, it was uh, an incredible experience. It, it was hard. I don't know if I can do it again. It, it was worth it, but it was very hard. Cool. Uh, Sarah, we've got one last thing we want you to do before we get out of here. You ready? I think so. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Sari Rudin, the host of the Once Upon a Feminist podcast, name a Detroit creative that everybody should know. Um, I would love to give a little bit of love to my friend, Ann Lewis. She is an interdisciplinary artist living in Detroit. She's an artist activist and a lot of her work, well, her style itself, I just love. It's very geometric and um, uh abstract but they, all, everything she does has a deeper meaning and it's usually based in social justice issues uh be it criminal justice reform or uh reproductive rights and she's very involved in a lot of these types of programs within the within detroit proper and her work is just always inspiring and impactful and she's making a difference and i think she's definitely someone you guys should check out Anne lewis 
Awesome. We'll yeah, go check it out. Definitely. Yeah. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Siri. Yeah, this has been great. Yeah. People can find your podcast. Again, it's Once Upon a Feminist, uh, and it's wherever you find podcasts, Apple Podcasts uh, and Spotify and all that. And people can follow you on Instagram as well. It's Sari Tales. Sari, thank yeah. you so much for joining us and telling us the story. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. It's great to be here. All right, that's it for us. Before we get out of here, there's a lot of ways to consume the show, especially sure nowadays. Is. You mm-hmm. can find us on YouTube as a video. We are also on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You can ask Alexa. You can even download our mobile app. So go get it. Uh, until next time, I'm Seth Ressler. I'm Becky Scarsallo. Detroit's moving. Keep up. 